Welcome to the video. This is a follow up to uh, the video where I machined a back plate for this magnetic chuck to go onto the Myford lathe. And in that video, I mentioned that the chuck key for it was a bit nasty. Um, it's functional, but I wanted to do something a bit nicer. So, um, so I did. Um, so I, I drew up this chuck key and uh, well, I, I sketched it up. Um, and it's made from 316 stainless. It's 10 mil diameter bar. Um, this is a, a piece of five mil bar. Well, it was eight mil, but I turned it down to five. I uh, didn't have any five mil bar on the shelf. And, um, and it has a hole in the end. That's a 3.5 mil hole. And that's so that it fits into the, the hole here on the chuck. So it has a central uh, pin, which that hole is there to clear. So that's a three mil uh, diameter. And so I've, I've uh, drilled that to 3.5. So there's plenty of clearance around it. And the um, it's got a, a hexagonal socket in there, which is eight mil across flats. So, um, so I've machined that to an eight mil hexagon um, with about uh, 0.1. Uh, of a mill clearance and um and i drilled and tapped this end to put uh, a grub screw in but lo and behold i went to my um my bin of uh, fasteners and found that i didn't have any uh, m5 grub screws um so i've got this round head screw in there for now so i'll i'll, I'll have to go and buy some uh, grub screws and um, the ones i had were m4 so in my head for some reason i thought i had m5s uh, but anyway, so that's done, um, and so it fits in there, fits really nicely. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's, I mean, there's plenty of clearance in there, but but it, it does feel a nice fit in the, in the hex skin. Um, the only downside to it, I would say, is um, I didn't realise how stiff the mechanism was when I was thinking about what size to make this. So I think what I might do is um, is make this um, a bit longer. So I've got a bit more torque because the old box banner, uh, which has a hole in it in the side, um, I would put a screwdriver in. And even with a screwdriver, it feels quite stiff. Um, but I didn't even think about that. So when I'm using this, this is quite, well, is, is it a problem? It's not, it's not really a problem, but it would be a lot easier um, if it was longer. And because it's a small diameter, um, I didn't want the ends digging into my hands, so I, I rounded the ends off, so they've got some little uh, ball ends on, which I just filed on. Uh, I didn't machine them on. So I'll see how it goes. I might, um, I might make a, a new handle for it, it's a little bit longer, uh, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So I'm just setting up to uh, clean up this piece of 10 mil bar. It, it has a saw cut through it, um, so it wasn't running particularly true. So I've, uh, I've just put the sensor in just to support the end. So I'm cleaning it up there with a bit of emery. Um, the size isn't important, it just I just want it to look nice, really. Just put a chamfer on the end with the file. I've just brought it back into the chuck here. Um, I'm just making that chamfer a little bit bigger and um, cleaning it up with the file. Just set up for the, the drill chuck now. I'm gonna drill and tap uh, the, the M5 screw hole which will be used to retain the T-handle in place. So 
I'm just coming in with the, the tapping drill now. Unfortunately, uh, I, I lost the footage of me tapping the hole, which was a bit annoying. So this is the next part now, so um, I'm machining down a piece of 8mm bar um, down to 5mm and this is what's going to be the handle. So I've got this supported with the tail stock and um, I'm taking fairly light cuts because it's, it's quite long and thin so I'm removing about 0.2 of a millimetre at a time so I, I don't want to go mad with it. So it took a while to, to turn it down, but um, we got there eventually. And um, I cleaned it up at the end with a piece of emery just so it looked nice. Now I've said it before, but um, these carbide inserts because they have, um, uh, because of the profile, they're not a dead sharp uh, cutting edge. So uh, they don't like taking like cuts. So the minimum really that I try to take uh, off with these inserts is 0.1 of a millimeter. And um, I generally um, take balanced cuts so that I can arrive at my finished size so that my finishing cut is about 0.1 of a millimetre. So I'm just filing the end of the rod here now so that it has you know approximately um, a spherical end to it but it just needs to look like it's round. It's not it's not going to perform any real function other than um, be comfortable in the hand. So I'm just cleaning it up with some uh, emery and then some scotch bright. So at the mill here, I've got the um, I've got the bar stock held in uh, an AR40 collet chuck in a collet block. Uh, it's a 10 mil collet. Um, the bar measures 10.06. I've just measured that. I've just done a touch on um, the top of the work here, and I'm going to use the dial on the uh, z-axis um, on the knee on here so that I can accurately um, set the depth of cut. So I'm going to be putting an 8mm, well nominally 8mm hexagon on the end here. It's going to be 10mm long. This is a 10mm cutter so um, it, it'll be approximately 10mm long. Uh, and so the first cut I'm going to take a millimeter off and the overall width should measure 9mm cross there and then I'll take this out flip it over machine the other the opposite flat um, I don't have a hexagonal collet block I've got one on order but I don't have one today and I don't want to wait for it to turn up so I've got with me a, a vernier protractor so I'm just going to set this to road for rotation in the collet after when I'm on to uh, the next pair of flats so I'll crack on with that now and um, I'll put some time lapse in now so that you can see uh, how I do that. Okay, in this setup, I've got um, the part flipped around the other way now, so 
obviously I've taken it out of the collet block, I've machined the hexagon on, but it needs deburring, but that's well out of the way, so that's okay. That's not causing me any trouble at the moment. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is, uh, I'm gonna find the center line of this bar now. Um, I'm gonna spot drill and then drill through and ream for the T-handle. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do now. I'll put some time lapse in to show what I'm doing. At some point I'll follow up with another video uh, just explain my rationale behind how I'm going to use the uh, the magnetic chuck because um, there's, there's been a few uh, people voicing their concerns about holding work on a magnetic chuck on a lathe and I get it, I do, um, but that's why you just have to choose the right work for it. And what I intend to do is make kind of like a, a circular fence to go around the chuck so it will it will fit over the diameter of the chuck um, and then it will have like a, a flange that wraps around here uh, it'll only come in a few millimeters and the, the the wall thickness isn't going to be very thick because the parts that i'm going to hold on here are generally going to be quite thin um, so i'll follow up with another video on that one and um, and it'll make more sense when you see it, but it'll have some grub screws around the edges just to retain it onto the chuck. And then all it does then is it prevents anything from being pushed off the face of the magnetic chuck. Uh, so it offers some lateral constraints and then the, the magnet holds it back. Um, so yep, yeah, so that's it for this one. So as I say, um, we'll see how, see how this goes. I'm not gonna be using this chuck very much, um, but anyway, I thought that was a bit better than than this uh, rammy old looking chuck key. Um, so it probably looks better, but um, it's not yet probably as functional as that one. So back to the drawing board a little bit, but you know, it's all uh, it's all in the name of tinkering. All right, well, um, thanks for watching. And um, that's about it for this one, a fairly short one. So um, uh, thanks. To those who have subscribed we're uh, just over 700 sub subscribers now so that's fantastic so thanks very much and uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye for now